check my volume. Top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day. Top of the day. It is cold down here in my house. Walked downstairs and realized yesterday I turned the heat off. Woke up freezing this morning. So I'm trying to get warm. All right, y'all. It is Tuesday, day 51 of year two of reading through the book of instruction and the prophets. Today, we are reading the last three chapters of numbers, numbers 34, 35, and 36. Last chapter is talking about the women who are inheriting property. All right, so let's get started. Nikki, hey girl, hey. All right, numbers chapter 34. This is a pretty quick reading, too. All right, numbers 34. And Yahuwah spake unto Master, saying, Command the children of Yisraelili, and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan, with the coast thereof. Then your south shall quarter. Mm. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zan, along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast in the salt sea eastward. And your border shall turn from the south to the Ascent of Akrabim and pass on to Zan, and the going forth thereof shall be from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazar Adar and pass on to Asmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the river Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall have even the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border. And this border shall be your north border from the great sea ye shall point out for you, Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Zephron, and goings out of it shall be at Hazar Renan. This shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazar Renan to Shepham. And the coast shall go down from Shepham to Ribla and the east side of Ain. And the border shall descend and shall reach unto the side of the sea of the Chinnereth <clears throat> eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan and the goings out of it shall be at the salt sea. This shall be your land with the coast thereof round about. And Massa commanded the children of Yisraelili, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot, which Yahuwah commanded to give unto the nine tribes and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and, ha and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on this side of Jordan near Jericho, eastward toward the sun rising. It looked like they had a whole lot of land, which, um, morning, auntie, it looks like, I mean, which makes, would make sense why they would change names around. Because you got from like the Great Sea until the Salt Sea and just different places. And just thinking about different things, I'm like, wait a minute. That's a whole lot bigger than what they saying that little strip is on the current map that we see of Israel. It goes way beyond that, you know. So, mm, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be looking into it. I need to, cause I'm still trying to track back some of the original names, and it's just, you know, I person. Well, I know what my thoughts are, but I need to kind of verify that with history and the name changes and all that stuff. But it's way more, you can rest assured that it's way more than that little strip that they call Israel. It's way more. It, and it says it not just here, but it also says it in Exodus and it also says it in Deuteronomy too. So, yeah, you, I mean, think about it. Think of how numerous we are. That little, that little small piece of land, that, that, that is not going to accommodate a, a, a tiny portion of us. Matter of fact, he said when we come back, there would be no borders because we would overrun the borders of our land because there's so many of us. Mm. Think about it. put all the pieces of the puzzle together. All right. 
The two tribes and the half tribe have received their inheritance on this side of the Jordan at Jericho, eastward toward the sun rising. And Yahuwah spake unto Master, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you. Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh. And the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amahud. The tribe of Benjamin, Elidad, the son of Chislam, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki, the son of Jogli, and the prince of the children of Joseph, for a tribe of the children of Manasseh, Hanael, the son of Ephod, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kimuel, the son of Shiphtan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulon, Elizaphan, the son of Parnach, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Yisachar, Paltiel, the son of Azam, the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud, the son of Shilomi, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Padael, the son of Amihud. These are they whom Yahuwah commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Yisulili in the land of Canaan. Remember, Yisulili is Israel. Chapter 35 of Numbers. And Yahuwah spake unto Massa in the plains of Moab by the Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Yisulili that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possessions, cities to dwell in, that ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them, and the cities they shall have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts, and of the suburbs of the cities ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about, and ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits, on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits, and the city shall be in the midst, and this shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither. And to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which you shall give unto the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Yisulili. From them that have many, ye shall give many. But from them that have few, ye shall give few. Every one shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance which he inherited. And he who will speak unto Massa, remember Massa is Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisraelite, and say unto them, When ye become over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares, meaning somebody that killed somebody by mistake. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the man slayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side, Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be six cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge both for the children of Yisraelite and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. <clears throat> if he smite him with a if he smite him with throwing a stone wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood wherein he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, and the murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. He shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by the laying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight or with any stone wherewith a man die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he died, <clears throat> and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, meaning if this was done by mistake. 
and the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whether he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. Now, let me bring some out. <clears throat> you guys probably already noticed what I'm just saying. Anyways, just in case you don't. You needed some time for the family members of loved ones to cool down, especially if it was done by mistake. Everybody is not so forgiving. You know, you kill somebody that they love, they're out for blood. They're the revenger of blood. He said, but if it was done by mistake, you need to go to the city of refuge. And you need to stay there until the high priest dies. They live very long lives. And probably the high priest may actually outlive the revenger of blood simply because he was in a protected state at all time by yah and he literally served in the temple so you know when he had to do certain things and live according to the rules and regulations that yah set out so i'm I'm just assuming since the high priest not saying that they always did but it's more than likely since it was a life um the the office of high priest is a lifetime office like you don't get voted in and voted out you got different terms and stuff he was going to be in the city of refuge for a very long time and after the high priest passed away and they got a new priest he could leave out i mean because some time would have passed unless he went in there when the high priest was about to kick the bucket you know i don't know i'm sure that happened you know but if that happened, I would, I would probably just stay in the city of refuge until the next high priest died. You know, you just pretty much just go there for a lifetime or unless you hear that the person that was out to get you, they didn't already passed on into eternity, you know. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, that was to kind of keep you safe. Let the family members of the loved ones that you killed by mistake have gone on, passed away that anger. Or they got old enough where they couldn't really do anything to you. and they, that, that anger against you has subsided and it's taking its flight and they feel like you know what it's not worth it i'm way too old to be chasing after somebody you know so but that's not always the case though because some people they hold on to it to the very end and they're gonna get you so you will say stay in the city of refuge okay verse 26 but if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge whether he was fled this would y'all tell him he said listen you stay there but if you leave out listen listen to this but if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So you say, listen. You leave out of here. I'm giving you a chance to just let all this pass over. It was it was a mistake, you know, but the family's still pissed right now, so you need to stay in a safe place. So stay here. He said, but if you leave and they find you, you on your own, bruh, and they're not going to be guilty of your blood. Mm -hmm. You know, so if he was smart, he wouldn't, you know, people, I got to go back and see my family. I need to go check out. No, do you the property of your life. Which one? Stay in a city of refuge. But, you know, y'all had to address it. Okay. So these things shall be for a statue of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, and he shall come again unto dwell in the land unto the death of the priest so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it defile not thereof the land which ye shall inhabit wherein i dwell for i you who will dwell among the children of Israelite. so he said listen murder is defiling the land and the land cannot be cleansed until the murderer who murdered somebody him or herself is dead that's how it's cleansed it's an even balance we keep everything in balance that's why the land is going completely crazy today because there's so much injustice been in the land and the land has to be cleansed i mean I, those are not my words i'm simply just reading here from the book and you have some um people don't like it but they i mean i mean it's harsh 
simply because everybody all oh, rights and safety, fair trial and stuff. But if you murdered somebody and it's granted, give you a trial. If there, if there was no witness to put you on trial to get evidence, I, I agree with all that. You know, everybody should have a fair trial. But if there is evidence that you've taken somebody's life unjustly, you premeditated this, I mean, why should you, and everybody may not agree with me, you know, why should you get to live the rest of your life being fed behind bars and some of them they they may get in there and you get other people that hear about what they did and they take care of them right in there i mean so it comes around call it karma what goes around comes around the golden rule whatever you want to label it is still the same principle that rests behind it life for life you know but i mean i i, I, I can't agree with this so, like, even in like the muslim world i think is um what is it what is the law um Sharia, I think it's Sharia law. I don't really know all the details, but it's pretty much eye for eye, tooth for tooth type thing, you know. Or you do something, you steal, you, you hand it, you stole it, you get cut off. See, those are the kind of things. Granted, it's very, very, like, in your face. Like, oh, my God, you, you know what happened if you steal from here, bro? You know, it makes people think twice. It wasn't to, like, y'all say he doesn't take delight in killing people. He doesn't take delight in the death of the wicked but he takes delight in the fact that they would turn from their wicked ways and begin to live a righteous life you know so i think the rulings and the everything how to live in a community amongst each other it was so harsh the um the consequences of doing certain things it was so harsh because he was trying to show you listen don't do this this is not a good thing you don't go violating your brother you don't go violating your sister friend even those who are not of you i don't care if they're different race or culture or whatever if they are content to live among you and you're content to let them live among them among you then you treat them like brother male female black white asian korean whatever he said you treat them all like brother the same rules that apply for you apply for them treat one another with love and with honor you know he said because it's not a good thing when you defile somebody or you you do something against them and you shouldn't your neighbors shouldn't live afraid among you you know they should be at peace we should dwell in harmony with one another no matter what background you are from or whatever you know but the thing is the the judgments were so harsh is to get everybody it's like my mama said she said all it takes is one good public flogging i mean like a lot of people learn just by looking and that was the thing to get you to say okay if you do this this could possibly happen is it worth that 5 a.m. whooping? Mm, nah, bro, I'm going home. Got curfew. Good night. Draw me off. Mm -mm. But some people, they like to learn the hard way. They're going to do what they want to do because they want to do it. They think they can beat the system. And then we learn from those who think they can beat the system. I, you see what happened to Keisha last week? Her daddy had to stone her first. No, I ain't going. Goodbye. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell on you. <laughs> no, so, but y'all y'all get the point of what I'm saying. You know, it was so harsh just to get you to think and get you to think twice about something that you're going to do to harm somebody else if we live by that today everywhere in the world how much better of a world would we live in you know but a lot of people don't abide by those values and those principles of life and everybody doesn't honor everybody's life no matter where they're from the color of their skin i mean it's it's sad but we still have a lot of that today you know people are treated differently because of the color of their skin or or whatever religion they are and it's 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 a disgusting thing to me, you know, that people have to walk and live in this world afraid of somebody else who is a vagabond and a tyrant in this life. And it's a disgusting thing to me, you know, so that's why it's so harsh. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I would, I don't know, I wouldn't be afraid to go live like in a Muslim nation but it makes me think twice because what if I do something by mistake? Or if I ain't cover my head right, who, you know, hmm, they kind of, I don't know. I think I'm okay right here in America right now, you know, because hey, we get a little more freedom. We got time to mess up and correct. Oh, that was wrong. I'm sorry. Did I, I apologize. And I just, hmm, I don't know. I still got a lot of growing to do myself. But I'm just saying I don't disagree with some of the way that they carry out their laws. But I do disagree with how they women are more oppressed in those in some of those areas and i and that's that's a 
that's another whole story. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a woman and I hate seeing other women being taken advantage of. And not just women, men too. Because I have five of my children are boys. They're going to grow up to be men. So when I see men um, violated, even by women, it pisses me off it it enrages me because i have men and i have a daughter and i don't know what i would do if somebody tried to do something to them like y'all ain't seen that side of sister pam you know i mean my sisters may have but i'm just saying you don't you don't you don't cross these boundaries because it's 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 gonna be like a, a bear robbed of her whelps over here don't play with me you know and if you think uh, but anyway, y'all get the point. You know, it, it, we just, and the Bible, I don't know. People just chalk it up as a religious book and whatever. But I'm just saying, it teaches you principles of how to live in harmony with with other people. Some people think they're just good stories. Well, whatever. The whole point is that you understand the principles about how what's being taught. And other religions have principles and different things. I mean, they're all good principles. They're universal principles that everybody would do well to live by, that we will honor one another. You know, we would help somebody if we see them in need, you know. And it's just, I don't know. It's just you learn how to live in peace with all people. You know, it doesn't matter if you're man, woman black white asian whatever you know it's just we learn how to live a upstanding honorable life helping those who we see in need if we have the means to help them and just just being an all-around balanced good person where no one would be afraid to be around you you know what i'm saying i mean so y'all get the point but that that's what it is you know so all right last shot Chapter 36 of Numbers is the last chapter all together. And tomorrow we start doing around itself. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near and spake before Massa and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Yisraeli. And they said, Yahuwah commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Yisraeli. And my Lord was commanded by Yahuwah to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brothers, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Yisraeli, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribes whereunto they are received. So it shall be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Yisraeli shall be, then shall their inheritance be unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Massa or Moses commanded the children of Yisraeli according to the word of Yahuwah, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph have said well. This is the thing which Yahuwah doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry whom they think best, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Yisraeli Removed from the tri removed from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Yisraeli shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. So he said, if he didn't have any sons, that the daughters could, um, if he had daughters, instead of passing it on to the next of kin, why should the daughters be looked over because he had no sons? So take that inheritance and give it unto the daughters, and the daughters should marry within their father's tribe, within their own people, so that when you marry. You don't take, um, they don't lose their inheritance, you know. So if you marry, if you stay within your own tribe of people, you can keep what your father has built for you and you can keep it for yourself. I mean, you join with a husband, but you don't have to pass it on because when you marry outside your tribe, you lose all your inheritance, you know, and you who didn't want that. He said, if you want to keep it, marry within your own tribe. That way you can keep what your father left for you. <clears throat> This is the thing which Yahuwah doth commanding. <clears throat> I read it again, verse 6. This is the thing which Yahuwah doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of any of the children of Yisraeli remove from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Yisraeli shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. 
And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Yisraeli shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Yisraeli may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Yisraeli shall keep himself unto his own inheritance. Even as Yahuwah commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad, for Mala, Tizra, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married unto the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which Yahuwah commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Yisraeli by the plains of Moab, by Jordan, near Jericho. And that is our reading for today. So, quick recap. We read Numbers 34, 35, and 36, which is the last three chapters of Numbers, and we'll start Deuteronomy tomorrow. And it's going fast. Like, we started over not too long ago, and now we're already in the book of Deuteronomy. Some people never make it past the book of Genesis, and they start hopping around. All right, y'all, so it's Tuesday. January the 21st, 2020, day 51 of year two of reading through the book of instruction and the prophets. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If not, you can go back and read it on your own time. Or if you want to hear me talk around my mouth, you just go back to the beginning of the video. It'll be posted after you've done. So with that being said, go ahead and bless your beautiful people. And the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And Yahuwah said, this is how you bless my people and I myself will come and bless them. All right, y'all. I love y'all and I will see you in the morning.